Which is good. We're going to go start anyway, so I don't know where Julio went, but let's just start at 9.30. Morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to uh, Tressa. <laughs> okay, so yesterday I sent out uh, a copy of the working with uh, the information guide from Rico. Okay, so as I, you see all the forms that you're going to see today, I would say we're probably about 95% there as far as these are actually the forms you're going to get. We may get some tr um, slight tweaks between now and December 1st, and we may even change some of the forms slightly after December the 1st. Okay? So, RICO Information Guide. <clears throat> this is an absolute mandatory item you have to give to the consumer. Okay? It's going to be part of your package, you know, when you do it for Sophia, if you're working with the realtor and all the other stuff. It's, it's going to be that you've given this and you're going to get consent shortly. It's 12 pages. You can do it electronically, or you can do it in paper form, okay? But Rico says as soon as you meet somebody, you're supposed to give this Rico information guide. And what does that tell you? It tells the consumer their options for agency, whether they're a client or they want to be self-represented. Customer is gone. There isn't any more customer. Anything to do with customer, all the forms to do with customer are gone. Okay, so from now on, as of December 1st, it's client or self-represented. That's it. So give them the guide. You're supposed to explain it. And we're, the next four, we're going to get consent that you've given it to them. Pardon? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, did everybody get a copy of this yesterday? Mm -hmm. Going to read it, digest it, so you can explain it. I would su suggest that if you can do this electronically, it's best because it's way too much paper to deal with. Okay? So, and then it'll tell separate, self people that don't want a, a to be a client, it's going to tell them all the bad things that are going to, that are not going to, all the things they're not going to get from you or as a client. So the idea is that they want everybody, everybody basically to be a client. Once you tell all the negatives, there's a, a couple of people in the industry that just be self-represented. Lawyers are white and flippers are two. People that deal in real estate all the time. They buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. Those guys might say, I don't need this. I'll do this by myself. I have a lawyer who's going to do the paperwork, da 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 da. Okay? Recall information guide, number one. Okay. Number two, working with a realtor is now two pages. Can you see that on the screen? No. The working with a realtor is form now 812. It's called 812? That's the number of it, 812. Working with the realtor is the name of it. The number is 812. 812. Is there a number for the 12-pager? For the, no, it's not. No, it's Because the numbered ones come from ARIA. This comes from RICO. Uh, you will not okay. find this on ARIA as of yet. Ah, uh, good to know. Okay? okay. So you could go on the RICO site for this. The working with the realtor is now two pages, as I said. And as soon as we get it on the screen, it up? No. Thank you. The first part is whether you're going to acknowledge having explained and received this guide. Believe me, this is what you need. Everybody has to sign off that they've got received a copy of this RICO information guide. And this is where they do it. When RICO developed the information guide, they, they didn't say they had, you had to have a signature. The act does not say it requires you for a signature. But let me tell you, if you end up in trouble with RICO, this is one of the first questions now they're going to be asking. Did you get a copy of the guide? Yeah. And the consumer says, no, what's your proof? This is your proof right here. Okay? So you need to get them to acknowledge that they've received a copy of the guide. The next part is the agency part. Uh, the client, <coughs> what services, and then we're going to talk about designated representative. So going forward as of December 1st, Roy the Page West will only be dealing in designated representation. We will not be dealing in brokerage representation. What does that mean? That means if Debbie has a listing and Paul and Paul has a buyer, they're each representing only their client. It will not be multiple anymore. Okay? We will not be dealing in brokerage representation. So you've got to take brokerage representation completely out of your head as of December 1st. 
will all be designated representatives in this brokerage. Okay? And who will be the designated representative? Well, some brokerages are adapt adapting a policy that they're going to say who is our, who are the DRs. We've decided that the listing the listing agent will be the DR. The listing person will be the designated representative. So if Beatrice has the listing, she will be the designated representative for that listing. Uh, Debbie comes in with the buyer, Debbie will be the designated representative on the buyer side. And it will not be multiple representation. Because no longer are we representing the brokerages. What does the brokerage, how is the brokerage involved in this? The brokerage has to deliver, uh, we provide services and oversight. That's what the, the act says. The brokerage provides services and oversight. Okay. Versus before, what was it? The brokerage was responsible for everything. Right. Carol, we got so you guys are were really muted, pushing. so people couldn't hear you at the beginning. So you want to just do a summary of what we, you have spoken? Okay, working with the realtor, you will need to make sure it's signed, the, first, the top part of the page, for the RICO information guide. This is to cover your ass. And where do you get that? This RICO information guide? Yes. This is found right now on the RICO site only. Okay. Okay. Electronically, you can send it to a consumer, download it on your, on your phone, on your computer, and you can send it electronically. Makes sense. Okay. The TRESA does not say you have to acknowledge getting a copy of this. But the, this form working with a realtor is going to keep you out of trouble when somebody says, I didn't get that. Nobody explained uh, client versus self-represented to me. Okay. There is a signature page on the back of this. Yeah, but there wasn't originally when they sent it out. Oh, okay. when, when they designed it, there wasn't. <coughs> but this is what you need. So working with your realtor, first part of it is get your signature for your guide. And the next part is going to be agency. Client. And you're saying you need the first, uh, the guide also signed and sent to Sophia. No, the guide is not going to send to Sophia. The oh. guide's going to stay with you. Oh, okay, okay. Well, actually, if you're sending the guide electronically, when you send the guide electronically, there's an email copy on it. So that's your proof of signature. Okay, I haven't sent it electronically yet. I just understand that you can. And there will be an email provided. That is your proof that you've sent it. But now it looks like we need a signature as well, Debbie. On this one. Yeah. And when so they, we'll when they first came that up, through. Uh, when they first came up with the guide, this, this acknowledgement was not attached. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then that's why Aria. Okay, so we have two different bodies here doing things. Mm -hmm. We have Rico doing the law, enforcing the law, Trussell. And then we have Aria, which is organized real estate, mm -hmm. trying to keep us up to date with the forms and cover us so we don't get in trouble. Okay. So two signatures on acknowledgement and on the working with real? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Carol, what if we have um, someone listing a home and you got ten offers registered? It's still called not called multiple offers. No, it's called multiple offers. We're, we're not talking about multiple. We're not there. Multiple offers versus multiple representation. Okay. 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 Yep. Okay. The multiple offers things hasn't changed. Okay. Well, actually, it has changed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has changed a little bit. So agency, client, uh, self-represented parties, SRPs, and DRs, which is all of us, will be designated representatives. It's two pages. Again, just like everything else, you need to get it signed. What are we looking at? Working with a realtor still. Oh. Okay. This is a closing document that has to go to Sophia, the working with a realtor. That has not changed so okay? Except that now it's two pages. Okay? We good? If somebody wants to be self-represented, what does self-represented mean? They're on their own 100%. They can go get a lawyer. They, they can do it themselves. They can write an offer on a napkin if they want. But we don't, do, we don't give any opinions to them, any advice, anything like that. What we can do for them, if Debbie has a listing, she can say, here's a copy of the listing. She can even go as far as giving them a copy of an offer and filled in certain things like the address, anything you would find on the listing, the address, uh, the land description, things like that, but no clauses. Anything in furtherance of a consideration for your client. So Debbie has a client, they have a property for sale. I come in and I want to be SRP, self-represented party. What can Debbie do for me? She can't give me any advice, she can only tell me facts. If I ask her, what did the house next door sell for? 
She can tell me that because it's public knowledge. Okay? Can I, and I asked them, what do you think I should offer? That, that can't happen. Advice, no advice, nothing from skill. Andrew. Can you suggest houses to look at for comps? Like you say, here's no. the comps, or is we have to wait for them no. to ask? It's no. It's all on them? No, it's all on them. Can you put the price, if they tell you this is what I want to offer, can you put the price in? Or, no, you know, it's up to them. Just the description <clears throat> pertaining to Facts, the whatever's on the listing. Okay. Anything factual on the listing. You cannot scare them, lead them, or anything else like that. Okay, self-represented parties. They do not get paid any commission. Okay? They're not a registrant. They're not going to be represented. There's no rep no agency agreement at all. So it's possible that they are. So if we could, could we go to form a 216, please? Self, seller, self-represented. Okay, so that's 216, seller self-represented. You want seller or buyer? That's seller. And then 311 is buyer. Why would you use a self-represented for a seller? Uh, a FISBO. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no agency relationship whatsoever. Are they getting commission? None. Who's going to pay the commission on a self-represented seller? Buyer. Okay. Everybody's looking pretty blank. Are what, we good? Why would you sign this form? If they're on their own, why would you sign anything? You have a them? buyer? So before you go in with any paperwork to a seller, like an offer, okay. you're going to make sure that you they understand. You knock on their door, are you interested in selling? I am. And then if I have a, a buyer and I'm going to like, not for sale by own, for sale by owner, okay, right? Like if the seller is self-represented, how would it make sense? So tell me that again. So you have the form two one six, seller self-represented party. Mm -hmm. When would you sign that? Well, ordinarily you would try to get them to sign an exclusive listing with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they didn't sign. And they don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want to do any paperwork with you whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They're going to be on their own one hundred percent. But if they're on their own, do. like why would you? sign anything with them but just because you still have to talk about agency with them will you be a client and let's do a, an exclusive for 24 hours like no I'm not signing anything the, they're seller represented they have to acknowledge that they agreed to be that Carol I, I see the word here the brokers will provide assistance to the buyer I see I, I, I already see the problem that let's which one before we're word, talking it at uh, 8311. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, they, they, they're going to interpret differently the word assistance. Yes. Okay, but, but we, it's up to us to determine yeah. what the assistance is. The act says assistance is only, anything is factual is the assistance. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 This, no, no advice, uh, no of your expertise. Anything that's not, if it's a fact, you can give it to them. If it's not a fact, forget about it. So what, the, what they mention is that you're providing assistance almost like on behalf of your seller, right? So if the seller, if the buyer wants a if, fact of how much that property yeah. sold, you can say, well, the property across the street sold for X, Y, Z, because um, it's, a fact. it's a fact. So you're just okay. providing assistance as an extension to the seller. That you already have a listing for. So you already have a so You have to have that existing listing. This is in the situation when I have the listing and the buyer is coming to my open house and he's saying to me, I'm going to represent myself. <coughs> it's fine, could you sign please the, if of course the things proceed, could you sign uh, this acknowledgement? First of all, you're gonna give him the information guide. You're gonna give him the RICO information guide. Self self-representative also. Wait a second, stop. Everybody, everybody gets the information guide. But why would they want to sign? Okay, stop, stop. If everybody, wait a second, everybody gets the information guide. That's where they decide, are they a client? Or are they SRP, self-represented party? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Then, once they say, okay, I don't want to be a client, I don't need you, I don't like you, I don't want to be part of you, then they're self-represented party. And that's where we enter into these, these other forms. And they have to sign it? To yeah, it they have to sign it. They have to sign it in order to buy the house that you sell? They have to sign it. Okay. Are not going to represent Can you give an example of when you sign the seller? Uh, this is a seller. There's a seller one and a buyer one. Yeah, so the seller one would be like a FISBO. 
I'm not sure what it means. Uh, I'm going to go by order. So you mentioned that with, with FISBO, it's the buyer, it's the um, buyer that has to pay the commission. But can you also ask the seller, self-represented seller to cooperate? But not now. You can't ask them to cooperate. Oh yeah, you can ask them. They, they would be on an exclusive listing for you. Yeah. So remember we did mere postings? Okay, a mere posting was? That um, you, uh, a consumer would call a, a, one of those discount brokerages and say, I just want you to post my property on the MLS system and I'll pay you $1,000. Before we went in to see the seller, we would get a form 202 sign that said they're going to pay us a commission. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and now they're going to be self represented. So you need a form, to get any kind of commission when you're working with these kind of people, you need to get that form 202 signed? No, there isn't any more to 202. Oh. Okay. That's gone. I said, that's what we're doing today, until December the 1st. And oh, then okay. there's nothing to replace that to no. be able to cooperate? No. Well, what's the point? Yeah, well, what's the point then? <laughs> so wait a second, the buyer's going to pay the commission. So there, there's a the, form. If the seller is self represents go there's a there's a form that is called like designated representation uh, with like self represented sellers. So there's a form that you can use when you are, and it actually asks you to state. So for example, let's say it's a mere posting, right? And they just want to hire you to do the mere posting. There is a form that you can represent that. Well. Not represent help that seller pose that form right and then you have to give them a list of the services <coughs> that you are willing to provide we're not there right. yet so we're, we're just that ahead. is a form 230 and that's going to replace the we're posting it's going to mm -hmm. replace we're not there yet okay so let's go back to the self-represented parties does everybody understand what a self-represented party is no agency relationship whatsoever with you, or with the Royal Page West or any other brokerage. Do you want to, you want me to show the forms? No, not yet. Okay. Okay. So the listing agreement is going to be Form Two Hundred. <coughs> which is your seller representation agreement. Mm -hmm. There's some new important here. Make a form two hundred maybe. Hmm? <coughs> Sorry, what number was that? It's form two hundred, so listing agreement. <coughs> uh seller rep agreement or yeah, listing yeah, yes. agreement. Gotcha. Okay. Which is agency on the seller side, right? Right. So two four you said two forty, right? 200. Did I say 200? Oh, I don't know. 240 is the one for designated. 200. 200. Okay. Page 99. Is it up? No, but it's okay. I mean, it hasn't. It's changed. page 99. So what's 99. changed on this? Is her name is going to be. Thank you. In the first paragraph, it's going to say designated representative, and that's you. 99. Oh, okay. You're going to have this listing, Danielle. So. There you go. These right. come in to effect December 1st. If I get a listing agreement signed today uh -huh. until the end of February, am I allowed to use the old form or come December 1st, I need them to sign it? You can do either one. Okay. You can let it ride with the old form. Okay. Or you can just uh, change them over. Does the old form expire at some point? <coughs> when it expires. Okay. Except for customers, they have until uh, March. Right. Okay. Okay. None of us have any customers, I don't think, to find out. Okay. So the listed agreement is more or less the same, it's the wording differences. The big difference right now is your name is going to go right there. So it's also plural, yeah? so it could be, let's say, we can put two other names here, just in case. Yeah. Okay. Well, so listen. Uh, uh, okay, so listen. If you're the DR for the listing, and Anna is the DR for the listing, what about if you get a buyer? Of course it's then, then neither one of you no, can represent the buyer. It's not the, right now, if you're the DR for the listing, and a buyer comes in and they want to buy that place, and you're not in multiple <coughs> representation, and Anna can do it for you. Yeah. No, no, but if you both go on the listing agreement, then you have to get Debbie to be your DR. Okay. 
Yeah. Pardon me? I always work that way anyway. Actually, a lot of it's the way we work already. You're right. So no longer will people with it, guys, guys, church, church. No longer will people with the same brokerage be in multiple. Okay? And you can't double end. You can double end. Oh, yes, you can. That will be the truest form of multiple representation, will be a double end. Mm -hmm. So you could have a listing, buyer comes in, they want to work with you. Yeah, you can do that, and that will be multiple. So does the buyer become so self -represent, the... represented or designated representative? No, both of them become clients. And again, with local representation, you, you're, you're just a mediator. You're going down the middle of the road. So designated representative and another designated representative, there's no multiple. In the no. same brokerage. In the same brokerage. If you are the designated representative for the seller and you get you sign off on the same client for the same trade, now you're in, in, in multiple. Multiple representation. Yeah. Gotcha. So that yeah, still that exists. That's it's still the multiple still exists, but only when it's you on both yeah. ends. Yeah. And there's a disclosure form that you gotta sign. There is a disclosure form. It's in my group of both many things there. So there's Ivan on the listing, and Paul is bringing the client. This yeah. is now multiple. If Paul, if you're on the, if you're the listing DR, by myself, by yourself, and, and a buyer comes in, he could be the designated representative for the buyer. Yes. Yeah. So this and is that's no, not considered. That's not considered multiple. multiple. So it doesn't matter if you're in the same brokerage. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So if you have two realtors with two buyers, it's still not going to be multiple? Sorry, honey? If you have two realtors with two buyers, right? Like buyer each, it's not going to be a multiple? From the same brokerage. For the same trade? Yes. That is multiple. It's no. Still For the same trade, it's not. If you have each two realtor realtors designated, it's it's two, de two different. They yeah. have to be designated. So Debbie, yeah. I have a listing. Debbie comes in. She has a buyer, Mary, and a buyer, John. That's multiple. But that, if, yes. if a, a B and Debbie come in, they each have buyers, and that's not multiple. Okay. So if you're on the seller side, you know how you have to notify of like brokerages of multiple representation? Would they notify us that there are two buyers from the same broker? Well, quite often not. Most times not. The only person that knows right now that there's two buyers on that site for the same brokerage is the listing side. Most times they don't tell you, they don't care. <coughs> you have uh, two agents on a listing. Are they both designated or is one person designated? If you're on the listing that says right here your name, designated reps, you're both, both listed. Okay, so say the Clems both have a listing and then they pick up a buyer. Can they undesignated no. one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Form for but, but that's a good, a good sign. Yeah. Well, so you might have to be well, strategic. You could, but you both on the listing. You would have to do an amendment yeah. to the listing take it off. And take it off. I wouldn't want to get caught in that spot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now that was way too sneaky. It might make more sense for them. Yeah. To no, both just one the no, We just, already know that it's one. Yeah. Yeah. Take, one of them takes the listing side. One of them takes the buyer side. Oh, the Clean, if you go to Rico and I saw you that Rico and you did that, I wouldn't be not happy. We can put the form designation. Okay, so with the listing, there is now a schedule, which a lot of you have seen before and you know what it is. It's the Form 203. It's a listing agreement schedule. You can use that if you so choose. There's no obligation to use it if you, if you don't want to. You can put down your services, what you're offering. I'm offering staging, um, painting, videos, Open houses, what they have doing open houses. I'm going to pay for your moving up to a maximum of whatever. If you want to use it, it's up to you. I mean, they're trying to push you to use it so the consumer knows exactly what you're offering them. Okay? How you, how you communicate to the consumer, that's up to you. You don't have to use the schedule. Okay, to so the listing agreement. Is that a schedule A then? Would it be an A? Whatever you want to call it. Make so it, if you don't have an A, it would be an A. So this is on the listing agreement we're talking about. Yeah, I know. Not on the offers. I know. Okay, so there's no other schedules with the listing usually. Okay, so then it would be an A. You can make whatever you want. A, Y. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Can we Could leave you, listing? Uh, just go back to the first page? Theater? Yeah. yeah. So why does, it, am I re why does it have brokerage on there? 
So the same thing is still Royal Le Page West Realty Group. But why would you put that on still? Okay, if you're because still the, the broker just still okay. owns the listing. All right, and where is the uh, realtor's name? And you will put it right here. So what Carol said is that the office policy mm -hmm. of Royal Page will be that every agent yeah. becomes a designated representative. Okay, all right. But right. you still need the brokerage in there as well. Correct. Right? Okay. Yeah. So if, yeah, and we have actually produced a office policy mm -hmm. that talks about that. Like the thing what we were just talking about, the designated representative for teams. There's also a policy for that as well. Okay. And there's some examples that you can see when it comes to uh, open houses, which I'm sure we're going to get to that mm -hmm. at some point. So does that mean now, in terms of liability on our insurance, that we're more liable now because we are considered designated representative? No. 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 It's still the same? This is about agency only. <clears throat> only about agency. I think you'll be more protected because first you start with your or RIA form, I, I think it's gonna, or I'm sorry, with your RICO forms, right? And actually I think it'll be easier to sign agreements when you are actually uh, beginning that relationship, right? Somebody says, okay, well, I wanna see that home, right? The first thing you're gonna do is talk about representation, right? So you'll use the RICO form, then you're gonna, if they wanna go and see it, you should, then sign the working with a realtor, right? And because you're gonna go and show that property, you can do a buyer representation agreement, let's say for at least one day for that property, right? But now you are keeping, so once they get into signing mode, it'll be easier just to do one, two, three. And even if it's for that day for that property, <coughs> otherwise you're kind of falling into like the implied relationship in which you're starting to show, but there's, there's no, there's nothing on the table. So we're teaching you the theory, guys. Okay, so we all know the reality in, in when we trade is a little bit different than the theory. Okay, how you do your forms, I'm gonna tell you. Rico says the earliest possible moment. But the real world is a lot of us don't do that. Okay? Just Peter? one clarification. Uh, they're using agents now. Okay, does that mean, because I was taught, okay, Thank the brokerage is the, uh, the agent, okay, not the realtor. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, you know, in everything that I read, okay, it says real estate agent. You can use the term now. Can you use it now? You can yeah. use it now. And okay. you can use the term real estate. The, the consumer guide is made for consumers, right? So it's plain English. It covers everything from like, what is the listing? What, you know, what happens when you sign an agreement, mm -hmm. right? Can you actually end up paying if you sign a, a buyer yeah. representation agreement? Talks about holdover, talks about commission. Uh, so, you know, it's 12 pages, but it's normally what we've been talking to people when you explain the buyer representation agreement, for example, or the listing representation agreement. It's all in there, so it's uh, it's not a bad read. I mean, I don't know if you want to... It's a long read. 12 <laughs> pages. <laughs> you know, and if you have two buyers, do both buyers have to read and sign the form? Absolutely. So I showed uh, a lease yesterday for to four people that I've never met. They would have to sign that guide, all four of them, before seeing it. That's the theory. The theory. Yeah. I'm telling you, this I is just want to know what the theory that's, is. This is the theory. <laughs> <laughs> this is all the theory, okay? <laughs> the practical way of trading, we're all going to have our own style. Yeah. Okay. okay. Especially with the lease, you know. The only, yes. Yes. The, only oh big, the only big caution I can say is the fines at Rico are much greater, and we can now uh, the discipline committee can take your license, which before it never was available. Yeah. So, so they can take your license if okay. If I'm not saying for that. No. Beatrice showing four. I yeah. No, I'm not saying for that. Times. I'm just trying to say you don't yeah. want to end up at Rico. Gotcha. You never want to end up there before, higher. but now. Really, you don't want to end up there. It's even worse. <clears throat> no, of course. Fines have doubled, and they, they have the authority, you know, uh, if you get a wingnut panel and a wingnut chair on discipline, and somebody decides they want to take your license for something ridiculous, hopefully they, they won't. But the only appeal procedure now when they take your license is going to the, um, it's called LAP, License Appeal Tribunal. And nobody ever wins appeals with those guys. So my, my, the whole bottom line is, please don't end up at RICO. Because the fines are gonna be a lot harsher, the panels, and we've gotta have more public members on the panel, and 
let me tell you, when you got the public members on the panel, they're just right over the edge. Yeah. One good thing that Rico is promoting is that in one of the new bulletins it says that before you go into a complaint, that they should deal mediate be, mediate be, between the brokerages, right? So before they get to that, but it says we're not preventing that the public makes a complaint. Uh -huh. But they said first they should try to solve the problem between agencies. In the RICO guide, at the back of it, it tells people how to make a complaint. Yeah. <laughs> so they even have that concept they want to make a complaint. Here it is. <clears throat> so, which is really not the best idea for us, but this is consumer protection. Okay? So the idea is that you want to have clients, not self represented people. Okay? That's what RICO is after. Go for clients. I personally, I don't want to deal with anybody that's self-represented. Because it's just like a fizzball. You end up dragging them along too. Okay? And there's a whole kettle of fish dealing with the uh, self-represented. <coughs> Multiple representation. We just talked about it. It's a form for the seller and the buyer. That's um, 325 for the seller and 326 for the buyer. Multiple rep acknowledgements. No more do they just sign on the confirmation of cooperation, those little ovals and stuff. Now there's actual forms they have to do. Okay? 325 and 326 is multiple rep. Right now we have a little form I made up by here for a lockbox to um, use a lockbox because Rico said we had to. <coughs> and now the act says that uh, they have a form. Rhea's come up with a um, form 208. Do you have it up <clears throat> Which we already had a form like this for Marina. They just and they've expanded on it. Injury access to the property for sole acknowledgement leaving people in the property. This is all cover your ass stuff. Okay guys. So one of the messages from Maria is that every form was touched. Right, and but they try to they just it. add the bare minimum to the forms, right? So some of the stuff only change like the communication paragraph, uh, but that uh, we ended up with a almost exact same number of forms that we had, except yeah. that they added one form, uh, and so they made it easy. They, they tried to make it as simple as possible in the transition, um, so that you know we're still pretty used to the forms. Nothing really major change, yeah. but all the customer service forms, of course, were gone. So let's say um, I have a listing, someone is coming for inspection. At, at the moment when I'm getting this inspection, I should send um, this you form. Home inspection? Yeah. Home inspection. Okay. No, do that form and you do the listing. Oh, but yeah. here is the time and... Um, you can complete that, but you would have to talk with people, your okay. sellers, when you're doing the listing. Okay. You know, you have to talk about self-represented, mm -hmm. too, that can happen when you're doing the listing. Wait a second, self-represented can go in? No, no, I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. But I'm saying these are the talks that you have to do when you're doing the listing. About who is possible to enter the house, appraiser, home inspectors, whatever else that list says. Well, we do that anyway. We do that anyway, exactly. Yeah. We do a lot of this anyway. Okay. We're just bringing it to the forefront. Okay, this is the part that I'm not real keen on, but we're going to talk about it. What's that? Uh, form 209, seller's direction to share substance of offers. I well, you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I personally don't like it very much. Yeah. Um, I can see a lot of problems happening here. So, Form 209, again, this is the talk you would have with your seller when you're doing the listing. You're doing all that listing paperwork. 4,000 forms, you're going to have to talk about possibly sharing offers, information. And do they have to sign this? Before? Absolutely not. Okay. Is and that, what happens if the buyers don't want, to, want their seller to share? Okay, and I don't have that clause yet, <clears throat> but they're, they're coming up with something that, a clause that the buyer can say that I don't want my offer shared. Okay? So that, if I do that clause is going gonna, gonna to have a irrevocability that says that if you disclose this offer, this offer is null and void. 
So, uh, so you might have a situation where you share three or four of the offers, but you don't no, share I, I, no. a different one. If you're going to share, it's shared to everybody. So if one guy says no, If I have 30 no, offers on the nobody. table, I have to share with everybody. But I inadvertently share your offer and you told me not to share it, then it's a null and void offer. So as soon as you have one guy that signs that, then you can't share anybody else's for the whole offer? No, no. Okay. I have 30 offers on the table. I'm yeah. the listing. My seller says, okay, you go ahead and share the price with all 30 offers. <clears throat> one of those offers says that I don't want you to share, that I can only share 29 offers with everybody. Oh, so, they can opt so you out. can. I can opt out. The buyer can opt out. Uh, okay, so there's, yeah. And the seller can tell the buyer, sorry, we're not doing that. So we're not considering your offer. What's that? That you can tell that buyer that sorry we're not we're not willing to uh, share. hide your offer. Oh, right. Oh, I think you can say no. It's still we're a valid offer. No, it's still a valid offer. The only part is you can't share it. <coughs> it's still a live offer until the irrevocable offer. Yeah. So what about if this offer is a winner and the others said you show me the offers? Well, and where is this one which won the the competition? Well, nobody would ever know that. Sure they would. Sure they would. They've seen a list of all the other offers. No, and no they, don't, they don't say offer one is this, offer two is this. No, but they be able to tell by the price. price. We see the sales price and what if the, the highest uh, hidden offer sells. Mm -hmm. Then they, then you're, somebody, so as a buyer, you're allowed to, I don't want to disclose. So, so, you're, so if that were saying the buyer's offer was the price of God. So yes. everybody else sees the offers on the table, but the highest offer which is accepted is the hidden offer. I'm sure they have a RICO complaint. Oh, mm -hmm. no, yes. it must be a, there must be a disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's probably right right now, I think close to all 29 that one of the that. offer wishes to not disclose their price. So, yeah, yeah, that has to be in like there, that. their paperwork. Do we have any with that? I don't think so. I'm, I'm going through my notes, but. You have, have to do I, something I, like I, that, because. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know what I see the problem here? Seller's gonna give written direction now. Round one, round two, she gives written direction. My seller gives written direction to round two. Round three, she said, I don't want to share anymore. Round three, <laughs> you stop sharing. She's yeah. going to do the reform, change this. Round four, I'm going to go back to sharing. Seller says, I want to share again. So you have open bidding, closed bidding, open bidding, closed bidding. It becomes a gong show. And 30 offers on the table. What's the benefit of showing uh, the other offers? You're asking me, I agree. I don't. I agree. I, for, from the seller's perspective, I don't necessarily see a benefit. If anybody can tell me what the benefit is from the seller, just get a low offer up. Yeah. Know. Okay, but if I'm milky, well, why would I keep everybody blind? Yeah, but what if they're all low offers, and now we know just, that the highest low offer is well, then, then you wouldn't show. Well, yeah. Yeah. Remember, the show. Yeah. Okay, wait a second, yeah. guys. Yo, yo, one at a time. I agree. I don't see personally. I don't like it. I don't see any benefit to my as a seller. Yeah. I don't see the benefit. But I, 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 blind bidding, I might have 30 offers, all low balls, and I get some, yeah, one Yahoo wants to go crazy, that's a benefit <laughs> to my seller. And is this an optional discussion or is this a mandatory discussion mm -hmm. that you have on offer? It's not a mandatory discussion. Okay. Well, but it's on the RICO form, right? So The guide? It's on the guidelines, so they're going to know about it. But we have to tell them about the option. Well, the option. Option. Wait a second. we all know that we direct our buyers and our sellers. They look to us for advice. Okay, there's a way to manage this, right? Gotcha. Okay. So one, you just one, manage it with, mm -hmm. with your advice, and then you won't have an issue. One one thing that they said is just like Carl mentioned is that there's no rules on this form. So if they want to start disclosing and then later on change that, they, they can, can do, do whatever that, they want. Right. So the main, what we made as policy is that if the seller changes the rules at any given point, you gotta get one of them sign again. Because if you don't sign that, and later on there's a, there's a, a complaint, they're gonna ask for this document. Okay. But I, I can see lots of problems with this, uh, you know, open bidding, closed bidding, open bidding, closed bidding. So once it opens for this round, the next round they wanna close it up again. You're gonna have all those it buyer's agents freaking out on you, and God forbid you miss yeah. sending um, the information yeah. to one person. And I'll tell you who you're going to miss it to? The person that's not a broker bank. 
the person that's yes. the SRP self representative exactly. or that yeah. guy who works in a small boutique yes. he's just yes. he's the only sole proprietor that's he's not right. a broker bank because we're relying on broker banks exactly I can emails. see this turning yeah. into a nightmare yeah. Yeah. well that's why we have an office yeah. policy for that if you revise the office policy, oh, if that other brokerage crazy. is not on Broker Bay or is a self representative yeah. individual, you must communicate via email to that person. Okay. But, but you, wait a second. So the pro, I mean, but if you have to well, the middle of the that's, that, that's the problem. I see you've got a ton of offers on the table. Yeah. It's 11 o'clock at night, you know, and now all of a sudden your seller's like, share. Okay, I'm going to share. I forget or I'm not thinking. I've got an SRP, a software business yeah. person. I've got this little Joe Blow who he's a one man show, he's not a broker bank. I miss these guys. I'm done. Yeah. As the yeah. agent. This whole sharing thing to me is, is crazy. Go. So um, just going back, and this might be a stupid question, you might have said it already. This is a mandatory form you have to get signed um, no. from the get go. It's a discussion. No, no, Only no. They want it's a discussion. Post. How you want to operate your business oh, okay. is up to you. But they don't I'm, want to anything. I'm not going to be, I'm not, pretty, I'm not dealing with it. I, in my business, I will not be dealing with it. <coughs> but, uh, go ahead, Paul. But technically, how you, because, okay, the, the, the seller say, Sure, yes. You know. Remember, so you can pick any to, of this. You can pick yeah. any of this or none, right? Like, okay, so you can only do, let's say, closing date. That's the only thing okay, we want to disclose. Let's say closing date. Okay, so yeah. now you have to technically type all, I can put everything like uh, offer number one, uh, closing date, offer number two, closing date, yeah. etc. They don't say how to share. They don't say, the act doesn't say how to share, which again is a problem. And that's what I was having a discussion with Julio. So I'm going to like, okay, offer number one, closing date, August 2nd, offer number two, September 1st. Like, how am I going to share? I just throw like, no, no, no. Well, that's where you're supposed to what the one seller one wants. One yes, but he said, day. how do you share it? Which is why right. I said, yeah. like, this offer has this date, you send it to everyone. That's what this is. Right. Yeah. Offer number one. It like doesn't have to be prefers. all the completion dates. No, for well, what I'm saying is that, how do you, what format do you share it? Broker Bay? Well, the broker base your communication no, tool. Broker. That's just a communication tool. But you could say uh, the closing dates are blah, 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 sure blah, blah, broker I got 30 bay. offers. I'm going to have 30 closing dates. I know. So, so I have to technically it's put everything. Again, no rules for this. It's how you run around your business. I'm, I'm yeah. saying it's a pitfall to me. I can see a lot of people falling in this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, so let's say <coughs> my seller decides to cross price as something to share. But um, in my negotiations, I'm only going to share if they're if they want if they need to go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. No, Where sharing is for everybody. Practice. Oh no, no, listen to me. <laughs> if your seller says share on the price, for instance, yes, all those thirty offers you have to share. No, it says any and all. No, oh, we were taught all. So, so hereby direct to share the following substance of any and all such competing videos. Yeah, I know. I saw if, an agent, I saw if an agent calls me and says, do I need to go a little bit higher or like a lot higher? If I have price <laughs> checked off, I can say, you're going to have to go a lot higher, buddy. You can show them the price, but you have to show everybody. No, but what if I don't want to show them the price? I'm just well, that's, saying that's in practice that they need, they're asking me, because it's happening in negotiations today. People it's will always, say it's that always to you. Happened. So the question is, are we more protected now because our seller has said, yes, you can share, but I'm not sharing the exact, and yeah. only if I'm asked. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sharing is sharing, like yeah. sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sharing is, is giving that information. No, for so sure. sure. I tell you, this is gonna, a lot of discussions are gonna happen with this. A lot of practices are gonna have to be fine-tuned within a brokerage about this whole form, I think. I can see a lot of problems coming Because it's also this. subjective. He just interpreted it any and all. Well, no, I know. And I his interpretation was I don't have to uh, share that with all of them. Yeah. It could be any. I know, no, I know. It, it would be any the same thing. You have to share it with all the people, but you can share any. any of like these if you just want to share one offer's price. No, it's yeah. This is the max That's price. If you guys aren't reading it, we're taking it. So you have to okay. tell everyone. Okay. It says Thank any you. and all, it doesn't say any or all. It would be all of them. The way and I read the material is that uh, it's you only every want to single show offer. offer. Any and, and all. Hold on. Go ahead, Dieter. The way I read the material, if you only want to show the highest offer, you're allowed to do that. 
I think I would need that written direction for my seller. You right. need to get written If I knew yeah. yeah. those yeah. specifics yeah. like that. That's what the seller wants. Write it yeah. down. And, yeah. not, and there is a that's comment not section. This is defined, though, because it says you're right. all. So if you're only sharing one price, <sighs> you're not. You could share the following substance of any and all. Of these priced upon yes. the conditions closing no. date, not of all offers. It's not talking about offers, not all offers. Yeah. It's no, no, I said, yeah. I know, but, so all, mm -hmm. but if you're seeing the offer on any of these yes. items you choose or your seller chooses, all those 30 offers, but whatever he, um, the seller but chooses, then you are disclosing because on the to all all section, section, if you're, to you're all only agents. sharing the highest price that's not what this is saying if you're only sharing the highest price but there's a comment section them. and your seller may say to you share only think, if they're they need to be I think the comment price. section is like this I, I'm thinking okay this is just my interpreting hold on we'll get there. That, <laughs> that's um, share all offers that are greater than two billion okay there, I think that's where the comments are going to come in. So it's about, I'll share the price for all the offers there that you know. Wait a second, hold on. I'm pretty sure that any and all means every single one because grammatically, if it would be any it's all. and all, there would it be a all. comma there. It is all. Bruno. You have to register. It's any and all of those points, but to every person. So if you share price, it's all the prices. If you share deposit, it's all it's the deposit. It's going to put everybody. 30 offers on the table. Yeah. Everybody's going to get the same information. Level playing field, remember that? Yeah. Level playing field. If you forget one person because they're an SRP or they're a one-man show brokerage, this is you're going to be toast. Do the buyers are the buyers going to be aware of this form? Like, if in the event that it hasn't been signed or only one thing is signed, but it didn't affect the buyer or whatever, like, like that in here? It's in that one. It's in the sky. I think it, you have to explain to the buyer. Like, so, and so we're saying that the buyers buyer should be aware of it? of this of this form. Like, if they're if they're that the so seller there's an opportunity has, to share. Yeah, and that the could seller be. has either chosen not to or only sharing one piece of information that actually doesn't affect that buyer, so they don't hear anything. Like, would the buyer? No, you would still hear, even if it doesn't affect that buyer. They still have to hear in a written response from the listing agent. Paul. So it could be a scenario like this, that let's say the seller uh, decides to uh, disclose, uh, like to share uh, the highest offer. Just one, but the highest. No, and I that has to come with the comment, I understand. That this is the highest offer I received, yes? No. That could be like this or not? No. I don't okay. see why not. Why not? I, I, don't, okay. I don't see why not, because under yes. comment section, your seller can say to you, only share the, the highest, highest offer. offer. Yeah. But that's not the or, seller that chooses. It's that form. That form is the guide. So you have to follow the guide. No, but you have to follow the instructions Legal. of your seller. But, yeah, the seller's direction. Okay. And Guys, listen, let's, let's, let's keep up one at a time, please. I'm talking too much. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I'm Stop. So every <laughs> offer you make now, you say, <laughs> if my offer is the highest one and it's shared, there's no one void. That way you're not a... Okay, yeah. So wait a second. Tell me that again. So every offer we make now, we should put a, a condition saying, if my offer is the highest one and it's shared, I want it to be no one void. Because you don't want to be just the, uh, sure, the stepping that. ladder no to... You can't do that in an offer. I'm just trying to say, I don't know that I want to be no one void if I'm sending an offer. Well, if it's that, if you're the highest one and okay. pe people are going to come back and just put more money, like... The offer is gone. It's, it's, that's why I'm thinking, why would I even do any of this? Exactly. So, yeah. Why am I right mind when well, I'm going to share? I, I don't see I, it. I only see if it like if it's like everybody's closed and the seller says, I want five thousand dollars more, ten thousand dollars more. Then this so is more back. this is more like sending back for revision. I think now they just have an a fork. The consumer thinks the consumer, the buyers have thought for a long time. Well, first of all, the government is, is uh, wanting to get rid of multiple altogether. That's number one. Number two, the seller, the buyers have thought, and rightfully so in, in a lot of cases, that they got screwed over on their deal. There wasn't, there wasn't those 30 offers, there was only maybe two or three, or maybe one. 
you know, and so that's why this always come about. Yeah. That give you somewhere that right of disclosure. But I thought that's Put what it all the 801 there. was for, so that they. 801 is not for it. 801 has never worked from day one. Yeah. 801 has was meant originally came from Rico. Rico said two things: register an offer, send in the 801, or you send in the offer. A lot of brokerages still say, oh, you have to send in the 801. Yeah. No, you don't. A lot of I've already I talked about that. You, if you send in the offer, that's all they need. If I call Rico tomorrow, I was an offer last night and said, look, I want to know how many offers were on that property. They're going to come to the listing brokerage and say, if I said there was 10, they want 10 either 801s or copies of the offers or a combination of both. 801s have never worked. Yeah. And they're still not working. Go ahead. Karen, just a quick question, um, and I hope I don't sound rude. How long are we going till? Oh. Oh, huh. oh you, you mean oh, right now? Now? Yeah. As long as it takes, I'd say another 10, 15 minutes and okay. we're done. Great. You're not rude. You're going to do so much of this. <laughs> yeah. But you, okay. do, you do have to make uh, your seller aware that this is available <clears throat> when you take the listing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You also have to make your buyer aware. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so if you're allowing, if the seller wants the highest one to be shared, you'd also have to talk to that buyer to make sure that that buyer's okay with that. No, no, you don't have to talk to the buyer at all. So you as a buyer... When you, have, give, me, when you give me your offer, that becomes my okay, offer. Okay, but isn't there going to be a form saying um, allowing the buyers to like, opt, out? opt out? Well, that, there will be a form. It's going to be right on your offer in the clause. Yeah, it'll be a, yeah. a clause. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this so the offer is not shared. If they had the share, if they yeah. had the highest offer, they could opt out to share that. Cost. Absolutely. Yeah. In multiple representation, I'm representing the seller and the buyer. Mm -hmm. The seller wants to disclose the highest price. I'm telling the, the buyer what is the highest price. So give me more, right? Multiple representation. You're in multiple representation, you're both ends. Yeah. And my seller signed that he wants to disclose the price. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to my buyer, listen, the price is like this. And yeah, you could do yeah. that. And this is. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Or I personally would not to tell anybody the highest price and just give me more. But if the seller agrees for that, and it's up to you. So they agree. So it's up to you how you run your business. Though. So this form should be uh, explained to the seller and signed, or acknowledged by the seller at the time when we are taking the listing and we discuss. You need to have the discussion with the yes. buyer. Not signed, but discussion. Not signed, but you have the discussion. That's a possibility. I, I personally are going to be talking against it, speaking right. against it. Yeah. I will not be doing this. So. Uh, That's the only I, option. This is just the option. Yeah. I don't intend to share. I mean, I'm going to discourage my sources from sharing. I think it's, I agree with you. I don't see an advantage to it. Go ahead. So you, you keep saying that like you can share like the highest price or what would not. I'm not sure. No. So what it says over here, any and all I actually did googling, any and all in law language means all without exception. So it would make sense that you have to share every single offer. But you any and all, it's just talking show. about the bullet points. That, they that yes, side. But, but and then when you go to the other sides, to every person. So for me, what I read is you can share one bullet point or all of them, but you have to share with everybody. Yeah, you have to share with everybody. That's not a discussion. Yeah. But if you're sharing no, with one, everybody, you have to share with I all agree, but I agree. I do believe that you cannot share one offer and not share I'm the sure. other. Well, yeah, exactly. Get clarification yeah. You have to share every single offer. If you share offer. a price, right, it's right all now, the price. We can yes, all the price. Yeah. You can't just share We highest. can debate until the cows come home. So not for that, gonna, it's still as clear as mud. For reading material, we have bulletin 4.1, number number and contents <coughs> of competing offers, right? So here, it will actually tell you. Uh, share every the contents. Right. I can't see it. Will you read it out? Without the seller's uh, written direction. Sharing the contents of competing offers. Without the seller's written direction, the seller's agent is prohibited from sharing the content of offers. A seller may direct that all or parts of the contents of offers be shared. If the seller's agent obtains written direction, the agent must share the information with every person who's making one of the offers. Yep. Agents must know, must follow the direction of their seller clients, including any change in the seller's direction. The written direction must clearly identify what parts of the content the seller is directing the agent to share. The sharing of the con <coughs> of content may be specific to select parts of the offer and may or may not include the price offer. 
sharing of content uh, might be used to negotiate closing dates, the inclusion or removal of a specific clauses, or the content or related to offer amount. The seller, uh, based on the advice of their agent, will decide what are, if any, they will direct their agent to share. It still wasn't clear. Well, that's yeah. sure. <laughs> just what we've been going around saying. Like, yeah. we understand that we can share, like, parts of yeah. it. Yeah, so that's just, that just summarizes what we've all been just saying now. Okay, so it's still as clear as mud. Okay, so I would say for now, just hold off on the whole sharing instance and see how it's going to work through our industry. Yeah. Okay, so we all DRs. As of December 1st, you are a designated representative. As far as the RICO guide, I recommend you share it electronically if possible, yeah. or you're going to be copying and copying and copying. I'm not going to be having copies of the RICO guide sitting up there in paper. That's just a waste of time, waste of money. Okay? Share electronically if you can. Okay? So it's really important. The last thing is, there is a, it's not a new form. It's a form we've used before, or we, it's available to us before. It's form 652, Broker Communication. Six form five 652. I mean, some people might use this, I, I don't, but you could. <clears throat> so uh, it's about uh, multiples, uh, how many offers there are, <coughs> and commission. <coughs> By the way, one more thing. If there is multiple representation, and the, list, and the buyer's agent's cutting commission, no more disclosure. Oh. Remember now, how right now we have to say, oh yeah, you got to tell everybody that there's a cutting commission. You know where cut, there's, you don't have to tell. Well, that, that doesn't, doesn't make, make any sense. sense. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just saying that's the way it is. If they're trying to protect the consumer and they're, doing, they're taking that out, that doesn't make any sense to me. Wow. Great. And they're still offering the most uh, uh, personalized multiple representation, which is you double ending. Yeah. Which makes no sense to me, which is why we put this out yes. in the first place. Exactly. I never said any of this makes sense. I want to say one more thing about in this about commission. Commission. Yes. Right now on our listing agreement, say it says five percent. Debbie has a listing, it's five percent, and she has a cooperating commission on. Two point five percent. What about uh, during this her listing, the buyer is a self-represented person. <coughs> Bless you. They don't get any commission. Can't pay commission for a non-registrant. <coughs> what happens to that 5% right now is all ours. <coughs> Bruno. Uh, Hold on, Bruno. Yeah, that was my question. But so that means that we should <coughs> talk to the seller and say, now, if I bring the buyer, or it's a self-represented buyer, I'll cut you to 4%, let's say. How you do your business is your call. Okay, but it's... Okay. So is that changed on the listing agreement? Because it says that part of that percentage goes agreement. to the cooperating. There's no listing cooperating. Agreement. No, nope. right. it's a listing agreement that's not changed. No. But, so... The way it is now, if I double-ended, I may say total commission is 5%. <laughs> And then Carol Murphy uh, represents the buyer and the seller in this transaction, so the commission is 4%. Yeah, I get I, I could put a notation that if there's a self-represented, if the buyer is self-represented, so the commission is 4%. I could, if I wanted to. It's how I operate my business. But if you don't... It's 5%. It's 5%. But it's does a, it it's a contract. Like, how no. does... There's no, there's no cooperation. The first portion is says it's total commission. Total commission. And then after that, if you decide to share, the cooperating brokerage is... So it's not that you decide to share, it's that, that it's there's in writing. The contract says you share. Okay. But there's no cooperating. Okay, so if there's no... Keep, go. So just in that scenario, I, I believe as of right now, you'd have to deem that a collateral agreement. So that now is off the table. You would have to disclose that type of commission scenario as a collateral agreement. Right now? Right. Right now? Um... 
you, that a collateral agreement exists. So, if, so well, you don't so, have to disclose collaterals anymore. You have to put them in writing with your seller or your interested party. Right, but you would have to disclose on the uh, It'd be on, on the on the special on the listing <coughs> that a collateral agreement exists. If it doesn't exist, that's great. You have a schedule, any more. a schedule for the listing that in, in case of this I would use or not, whatever. But we don't have to disclose that to the broker. The broker Probably, no. yes, what he's saying makes sense because now if you have 10 company offers, the buyers need to know if one is a self-represented buyer, the seller is paying less commission, so he might be willing to accept that offer. Right? Not that I know. Uh, but it makes sense. It might make sense. <laughs> what can I say? A lot of this stuff unnecessarily makes sense. Right now, that commission is 5%. Self represented, the buyer's SRP, brokerage is 5%. So you don't so have you to tell the other buyers points. that? Pardon? So you don't have to tell the other buyers? Right now, I haven't heard that. Okay. So remember that they say that uh, self represented parties will be the very, 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 very little minority. Yeah. I that. know, but that minority can get you a $50,000 fine, so you should. <laughs> no, I mean, because when you are agreeing on the commission is when you are doing the listing presentation. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm only saying one buyer can come back and say, well, he accepted that offer because the commission was 4% and we didn't know that. Like, we should have known so we could up our offer another 1%, let's say. Right now, that's not been disclosed for us. Not but right the way it stands now, 5% commission, SRP is the buyer, we get 5 points. You, you would know the cooperating commission, so you could potentially know what the discount would be. You could argue against that, right? Yeah, but the other buyers don't know that there's know a self-represented the buyer the in the, the pool. The they know posted. the cooperating, so they could know it could be a discount of up to 2.5%. No, no, no. I'm saying the buyers, they're represented by other brokerages won't know there is a self-represented buyer on the pool. Right. Right uh, now, I don't know that we have to disclose that. I know. I'm just saying it's a, it, you have to disclose. It's a commission advantage to the listing. Yeah. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. But right now, we've not been so They're dropping that practice that we're doing now. Which is? Which is, which is that you have to disclose. <laughs> yeah, uh, so they're commission dropping it December the 1st. Mm -hmm. which, is, which will hurt buyers. Not help buyers. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. But the buyer doesn't it pay commission no anyway, so what's the business? You know, mm -hmm. it's just like Well, yeah, so it's just the one that the other buyer is coming back because they'll come back the same way saying that that wasn't fair. One more thing. Yeah. I've, got, I've got, I think, a copy of 15 different webinars coming up from, from Maria. Maria webinars are not great. They're, they're very confusing, but here they are. Uh, uh, Trev has some better webinars out there. I showed Mark Weislater last week and uh, very lost it. Peter, did you look at him again? Did you look at Mark Weislater mm -hmm. webinar again? He's pretty good. He keeps it straightforward. Yeah. But it, he's really, he cuts it down to the bare bones, but there's so much more to all of this. Mm -hmm. And we're good, it's going to unfold as it, if we play it out in the industry. So I think uh, we should talk about this, uh, the one? open house thing. The scenarios that we put in our policies. Okay, you start with them. <laughs> so the scenario is the following. Let's see. A person attends an open house and expresses interest in seeing additional houses with the listing agent. Huh? So, part A, clarify representation status. The agent should first clarify to the person that they're currently representing the seller of the open house. It is important to make clear that in showing additional houses, the agent is automatically yeah. represented, representing the, insert, the interest of the person from the open house, right? So the first thing you gotta do is provide the general information. Uh, uh, right. So first thing you gotta do is, if the person is not represented by any other agent, the listing agent can provide general information about other properties, but should avoid giving specific advice or opinions that might imply a client relationship. Uh, provide the recall information guide, right? And avoid imply, rep uh, imply representation, right? So first thing, if they wanna go and see any other property, right? So talk about representation, provide, the RICO information guide, and then if you decide that you actually want to take them to that other property, 
I would, you know, uh, say that you may want to do the buyer presentation agreement as they're doing, as you're doing the RICO information guide as well. Uh, and, you know, just talk about that, that uh, scenario of, of representation, right? Isn't it required to do the buyer right now? Yeah, anyway, yeah. It's it's what they're saying is that you should, the moment somebody wants to go and see another property, you gotta pull out the reconfiguration yeah. guideline and say, well, let's talk about representation. Remember, this is a theory, okay? So don't get yourself wrapped up in this. Yeah, it's a theory. But it's to protect yourself, so you should be doing that to begin with anyway. When you do it, it's up to you. You should be, you need to do it, but when you do it, it's up to you. <laughs> I say Rico doesn't say this is it, right? Okay. Well, you we went from Rico to Tressa, this would be like this now, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, once you're explaining that, that, talk about yeah. agency, right? Pull out the working with a realtor and just go in and do one showing for the day, get that sign at least for the day. So in the case that they want to put an offer, right, that you will earn your, your commission, right? Another scenario is a person attends an open house and expresses interest in putting an offer on the open uh, on that house. What would you guys do? Sorry, say the scenario. A person comes to that open house and expresses interest in putting an offer to that house. So can't you do the multiple representation? Uh, it would be a multiple you have to clarify that they're not working. Clarify. Saying. Option A, clarify representation. Right? You got, yeah, yeah, just say that you are currently representing that, that seller, right? And then, guess what? Then you gotta provide the RICO information guide to that person, <coughs> right? And you can, they can decide to be self-represented at that point, right? So you gotta explain the risks, this keyword, the risks of being self-represented, right? So you gotta make self-representation the evil of all evils, right? Well, it's, it's, not, it's not it's not totally power. different than what we do now. <laughs> exactly. Okay, guys, it's not it's like earth for shattery here. Somebody comes an open house, they want to buy your property, bang. Information guy, working with a realtor, client versus self represented. We're going to get them out of clients. Okay? Or not. Like, if it's your or, yeah, open house, you just... Well, it's up to you. I'm, I'm talking... You're making you double, you double any anyways. I'd rather have just my my seller, yeah. and the other guy to be self represented. If I'm making if I'm making both. The line when you start dealing with self <laughs> when you start dealing with self <laughs> yes. Listen when you start dealing with self represented people, individual parties, SRPs. That line crossing is very narrow line. I'm just very, saying very for narrow. one offer at an open house. I'm like, you're gonna all right, do it by yourself. Yeah, you're gonna get the, yeah. the commission. So if this, I don't think I yeah, but I don't have to do both not, paperwork. It's not commission based. Not if you sign that you're reducing the commission in the case there's a self-represented individual, right? But it's the same thing. If I get them both, or if it's self-represented, I'll, I'll make the same money, right? Yeah. Forget about the money. No, okay, but paperwork. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, if that person that walks into an open house, okay, just wants to ask, you know certain questions about the house, <clears throat> about the house, right? That is, you're still providing, a, you're doing an extension of service from the seller to that consumer. At that point, he's only like a regular consumer, right? It's only when he starts saying, "Well, can you go and show me that house across the street?" <clears throat> is when there's a fine line that I, you're walking. Out, I know. I'm right? just saying, if it's one offer for one property that I'm listing. I almost want them to be self-represented. I don't see that. No. I don't see that. He makes a point. He yeah. makes a point nonetheless, though, because that's clearly uh, uh, there will be lots of agents who will think that way, Again, and it's are, not to the best interest. There are risks in this in uh, self-represented right. that yeah. you should explain clearly. Of course, and emphasize. I the will. Plan. Because if you have to explain to them what multiple representation is, it's going to scare them off. Of course. Yeah. Right? So exactly. you have to find designated rep, and then you're you're giving them up to hopefully me. Or you keep them as self-represented, and it's easy peasy, and that's on them. And yeah. they've been given all the bells and whistles with this sweet yeah, guy. Then the lawyers try the offer, right? Eh? Yeah, because why did, that, information why did that offer doesn't doesn't complete, right? Then you can because he's now still your client, then you can take him somewhere else. 
if he's if he was several percent and the deal doesn't complete then he for that site done. yes but if you know the people that the person is like okay i don't want to see anything else i want to put an offer here i'm like okay if i get a deal with the lawyer on the other side i really think you're perfect client go down the door one more thing confirmation of a cooperation guys for 320 before we wrap I'm talking about all these forms. Well, I'm talking buy and sellers. The same thing applies to landlord tenants. Whatever forms we're going to get buy and sell, we're going to get landlord tenant. Yay. I know, it's exciting. Yeah. Okay. So we can see form 320, the listing brokerage. If we are designated reps, which we are, we are going to be 1D. We will be number one, we'll be one, D, and we'll be number two and three. The seller client and the buyer client, assuming the buyer is your client, are each separately represented by different designated reps of the same brokerage, and there is no multiple rep. And then number three is the designated rep is providing representation to the seller client, and the brokerage is providing services to the seller client. Okay. So you have to click one, D, two, three. Bingo. Assuming that's the case. But I would say most of it is going to be that's going to be the case. Uh, from the 1st of December, are we going to have changed all um, our forms in Sky Slope? So whatever we have. I'm assuming that will. Yeah. yeah. And this will now have three pages. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Sue. It's three pages now. Okay, not two anymore. Okay. Along those lines, uh, you have the uh, buyer and seller packages on SkySlope and web forms. Are you going to update those by December the 1st? Well, we'll let the forms come out first. <laughs> yeah, so uh, at, some point, after, at some point in after. December, right? Yeah. I mean, there may be some minor changes yeah, in this yeah. stuff. Okay. But you're okay. going to put those packages together as well, Complaints. just like you have now. Oh, well, that's Complaints. not going to happen overnight, because we're with, yeah. we have to go through Korea, mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen instantly. <coughs> so, Korea okay. said the webinar on November 30th is actually very, very important. 29th, isn't it? 29th. 30th. I think it's 29th. 30th. I, I put up the webinar stuff up here so you can grab it. I think it's the 29th at 1 o'clock. And then there'll be the RIA webinar. RIA. RIA. <coughs> okay, they're going to send out by email so, to everybody. Sorry, what webinar? A uh, real webinar. About the I think it's November 29th. I also saw. Uh, 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 just say here, but I can't read it by email. email. <laughs> Yesterday. I also got the uh, new trusted resources now available from Rico about the three hour course. Well, that's okay. So the, if you're doing, redoing, doing your uh, education every two years, the old Rico. Uh, a mandated course was under uh, Reba 2002. Okay. Now it's uh, that's gone, and we have the new trust of course. I just did that. I, I know. So I have to do the new. No, you don't have to. Do. Okay. So they just put it out there. It doesn't come into effect till December first. Okay. They just put it out there for people can see it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, any questions from people online? There were some in the chat. There was only one. There was no sound. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. I mean, Huli and I are here for questions. Uh, I'm sure we'll get calls. Liz, we'll any uh, questions there? Is so I would say uh, read the the Rico bulletins. Very, very important. The four of them came out yesterday, right? So, uh, so we put together a word document for you where you can have a summary of that in case you don't want to read them all. There's still like 50 pages because there's a bazillion of bulletins right now. Let me just show you this list. So this is the list of bulletins that came out, right? And they're all like two or three or four or five pages each. So we have a summary. So read the summary so you understand what are the changes. And then remember that uh, there's either brokerage or designated representation, right? We have chosen to be designated representation because it's gonna be easier for the brokerage so that you guys can continue to do multiple uh, yeah, multiple representation without having to be completely 
you know, not giving loyalty to one client, right? So we can, so we decided that rule. And then there's also the office policy that you should read. So you can know what uh, we've taken into account for, for this designated representation. And then the other thing is just the forms, right? But Maria said that the forms are changing the bare minimum, right? And, and as long as you have your understand that you have to do the recall form first, if they're uh, self-represented individuals, there's two forms that you gotta sign for that, okay? And then uh, when you're doing the Eureka form and they decide to be client, uh, you gotta do the working with a realtor two page, working the realtor page, and you gotta get that signed. And because you're doing already that and, and the working with a realtor, move on to the buyer representation agreement only <coughs> at once if you can, and that would save you the hassle of doing the paperwork. Self-represented also sign the working with the realtor. That's right, self-represented, also signs the working of the realtor. Oh. Understanding that there are risks, still risk, remember risk, danger, the evil, <laughs> right? What if they refuse and still hand you an offer? <coughs> you must, it says that you, they must sign that they but understand But Angela, the today, so, it's like today, if somebody refuses to sign, yeah. at the end of the day, make a note of it, date it, <coughs> what you can do? They give you an offer. You can just sit here. Yeah, you have to give they wouldn't sign my paperwork for not giving you the offer. Yeah, you need to sign it. It refuses to sign it every time. You gotta sell it to them. That's how we sell it. Okay. Well, I think it's very important. They actually say that they you gotta explain the form. Mm -hmm. Because I'm missing there. It's like it's mandatory. You gotta explain the form. And if they decide to still continue to be self-represented, then there's two forms that they gotta sign, and then they're working with a realtor. So by then they'll be like, ah, no, I'll just be a client, <coughs> hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but you gotta you gotta explain that by 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 law, right? Well, but if the repo form is mandatory, they could make it as <clears throat> the offer is only valid if you sign that you self represented, right? Offers a contract. You have a duty to present all offers. Somebody gives you an offer, they refuse to sign all the other paperwork. So how can we come after? I still have to give that offer have... to my client, which is. Oh, I know, but okay, don't don't get caught up. It, it, yeah, a lot of changes, but they're it's just how you present it, how you're going to do your own business that counts. Okay, I say explain it. Yeah, and like Rick, like Julio said, you're going to sell client. You're not going to sell self represent obviously. And if you want to sell open offers, open bidding, that's your call. I'm not going to be selling. It. I mean, if somebody didn't want to sign that, to me, it'll be it'll just give me bad vibes, right? And because uh, what if he doesn't have the money? What if he? It's a good offer. You still gotta give it to the client. You have to yeah. have to go down that road. What do you yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You say you'll sign it and accept the offer if he signs the agreement. There you go. But they still, but if they say no, you still have to show that offer to the client. If the client likes it, they say yes, we want it. You don't have to pay for something, so you're still just document stuck. that there you. you the pressure mm -hmm. That's right. for them to sign. Just be like, person didn't want to sign. I mean, it's it's cool. right now. Guys, today most everybody will sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Explain it, don't make it too ominous. You're going to sign it, okay? It's like when we first came out with uh, buyer reps, people were like, ah, oh, nobody's ever going to sign a buyer rep. Like, it's all full. People sign it, okay? And the same with FinTrack. FinTrack, yeah. same thing. Just sell it. I mean, that's what we do. We sell. How you present your case to, your, to the end of the consumer? They'll find it. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.